This time on Graveyard Cars, the film crew follows Mark for the day. The sunroof challenger returns, and it's not pretty. And work begins on the Plum Crazy 446 back challenger. Coming up on this episode of Graveyard Cars. In case you missed it, we got the rear valance and bumperettes installed on our 1970 Cuda. I spent time with Alyssa teaching her with the correct assembly line markings, where they go and what colors. Will did a beautiful job painting our 1970 Dodge Challenger RT446 pack in Plum Crazy. And our drivetrain is installed in the 1970 Hemi four-speed charger and it's ready for final assembly. We're getting ready right now to roll in the uh, 70 Challenger 446 pack. I just finished the cut and buff on it. It's gorgeous. And we're going to roll it in, set it on the bin pack, get it raised up in the air. And the next thing for it is to get the engine and transmission installed. When we have a vinyl top that needs to go on a car, the first thing I do is get it opened up once I receive it, lay it out on the roof of the car. That way you can get all the imperfections out of it, all the little wrinkles out of it from shipping. That way, when the upholsterer gets here to install it, it's ready to go. That's a lot of overhang back here, boss. This is for a completely different car. Well, I think it is, because the seams for a Challenger are all the way out here on the ends. This is a stupid problem to have. But this seam isn't supposed to be crooked like that. It's not even This seam is supposed to be straight. That looks like a Charger top. Well, that fits beautiful. Yeah, how about that, huh? That's a, that's a good looking top. Oh! I know what I got to do. The guy that owns the car, right? Remember my high school car, burnt orange with a white top? I kept trying to talk him into putting a white top on it. I need to take a picture of it and send it to him and tell him it looks great. God, what's crazy is that's my old car. Oh, man, that, that was a panty dropper right there. You know what I'm talking about. The old guy, all the girls, oh, here comes Warman, he's so cool. Panties fell off when Mark I'm talking about back the in gut. the gut days, my old dri driving the gut. See, that's the wrong top. They sent us the wrong top for it. Yeah. That's for a Charger. So when a woman but sees this car, they're paying when he sees, strong. That's the good news. The bad news is we don't have a white vinyl top for our Challenger. <laughs> oh. uh, the vinyl top is a bust. That's life. That's a curveball that we get every day at Graveyard Cars. Everybody knows what that's like. Hopefully tomorrow the vendor will have another one in stock that they can fire out. I mean, I hope that tomorrow is a much better day than the end of today was. What are you guys doing? We're here early for DL. He wants to do a follow you around. DL wants a uh, day in the life of Mark Warman. We're going to follow you around today. I wish he would tell me stuff like that. That was supposed to be like next month. No, oh, we're doing it now. Unbeknownst to me, one of the directors, DL, has decided to have the camera crew follow me around for the day, which is fine if he would have just told me ahead of time. A year or two ago we did this and the camera guys had a hell of a time keeping up with me and I'm twice as busy now. So they need to have their little running shoes on too because it's gonna be a rock and roll day. Good looking young kid, look at that, that's my ha 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 ha. Watch a little rerun on the old V channel. Say hi to the camera, little tiny T. Hi. I like your hat by the way. Thank you. <laughs> And I see Aaron's not here yet. Unless he's downstairs making my coffee. Have you seen him? I have not. He better be down there making my coffee. Good morning, sir. Um, wondering if you are on your way in here that you could make me a coffee before I do a 187 on somebody. As soon as I arrive, I will uh, make you a coffee to prevent a 187 or any other code that would signify violent crime. Mickey, what you working on? Um, yeah. Hey there, Big Dave. What up? Morning. Morning. How you doing? Good. All right, so what I'm doing right now, I'm getting ready to put the decal, uh, the Bumblebee, Bumblebee stripe on the 70 Charger RT. And I'm just looking to see if Dave has any reference in here. Basically, after doing a little bit of research on these cars, the Bumblebee stripe that went on the back of the 69 Dodge Charger Daytona and the 70 Charger, they were fairly wide. Originally on the assembly line, when it came time to put the side marker in, they just cut an X in the actual opening of the side marker, stuffed the side marker into it, and whatever flaps were left on the inside, they just folded around. I wanted to see if they were still doing that in 70. That's what I'm looking for in the book. Yeah, I don't think so. All right, I'm gonna have to wing that part of it. That's fine. I'll just leave that part in there, the flaps in there, and uh, it's easier to get rid of them later down the road if you need to, than to add them if they're already gone. So here we go.
Once I laid the beautiful V8X black bumblebee stripe on the 70 Charger, I couldn't wait to send a picture to the owner. I knew he was gonna be excited. Turns out he wasn't that happy because it was the wrong color stripe. I should have looked at the broadcast sheet. I'm the first one to admit that. However, common sense in my mind was that it was a black stripe. I don't know why in the world I forgot that. But another problem is if Aaron was here making me my coffee, my brain would be woke up, okay? I wouldn't have these little faux pas. This is also a good time for my brain to start getting kind of fertile too as it starts. Glad you could make it. Did you get the memo that we're still starting at nine o'clock? It's 9.02, it's 9.02. 9.02, I'm sorry, yeah, so 902. I failed you. you be here at nine o'clock, you know how my <laughs> idea for a show. Work with me here a little bit, okay? I think it's awesome that Mark built this whole kitchen and I love coming down here to make coffee because it gives me a break from editing. Mark really takes it as a moment, not to get coffee, but to have me cornered so he can just run more and more of these insane ideas for TV shows past me. Name of the show is Current Edition, okay? race to the chair. Which aren't really ideas for TV shows, they're just really, really long setups for bad jokes. And what it is is you follow a group of convicted killers who have been sentenced to death in the electric chair, play on the word current edition. Uh, yeah, 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 current edition. Uh, there's no telling how many coffees Mark's gonna have in a given day. We go through a lot. I'll be here all week. And now it's time to install the completely restored dash from Mr. McSpecialties in our 1970 Hemi Charger RT. I literally have 100 things I have to do today. It's gonna be a real fast-paced day. I hope that the camera guys keep up with it because there's a lot of brilliance happens in the course of a day. Uh, I hope Aaron keeps up with me on my uh, caffeine supply and uh, I hope nobody gets hurt. This incredible story becomes more ghastly with each report. The unburied dead are coming back to life. Okay, how far out would you say? All right, okay. Our Sunroof Challenger is arriving here any minute. Back from Canada. See how she's fared up over the last couple of years? Probably looks the same way it did when I left. It's been several years ago that my client decided he wanted this Sunroof Challenger. It was a bare bones, nothing car. It was just a shell, a fender tag, and a dash bin. Once we started getting into the numbers, we realized that it was one of one. That meant this car got restored to OE perfect condition, regardless of cost. So we did the body, the paint, the interior. We completely restored the drivetrain, the 440. We had to find one that was the right date code. The transmission, the eight and three quarter rear end, all these things were picked up, purchased, restored, and installed in the car. So that at the end of the day, at the end of the time period, we had a beautifully restored one of one FC7 power sunroof Dodge Challenger RT. Well, I'm anxious to see it. There she is, yeah. The guy who we did the car for originally called me up a few months ago, asked if I knew anybody that would be interested in buying it. I helped um, accommodate the deal. The owner who just bought it wanted us to sign it, go through it, detail it, make sure it looked really good. It had been a year and a half since we'd seen it. Factory sunroof, luggage rack, we're talking about a houndstooth interior, power windows, SE dress set package without the SE, nice. bumblebee stripe, FC7, U code 440, power sunroof, all that crazy, that factory V21, it's all coded for it, right? Awesome. But check this out. The car was made so early that they didn't have the flip top gas caps available. They were in the magazine, they were on the order sheet, but you couldn't get them, so that's why it got that one. This car was built on August 2nd, 1969. That's the very first day of production. Oh, well, wow. technically August 1st is the first day of production, but nobody's seen any August 1st dates. That's awesome. So the car gets back here, I, get, I go outside and find out that it won't start. I don't know. Still nothing, huh? Which Mike told me the other day on the radio that it wouldn't start. Well, cars don't break sitting on the back of a, a tow truck. When they were driving her off the last trailer to get to mine, it made a weird noise and wouldn't start. Well, everything don't look good. What's that? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, that don't look good. When he said it made a noise, it definitely should have made a noise. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's your problem. And then wouldn't run. Now that we got it inside, it turns out that it looks like the lower end let go on it, which is basically where the connecting rod has come apart from the crankshaft. I don't know why. I didn't actually build the, the short block on it. I just built out the top end on it. I think just whoever built the short block didn't do it right. Maybe he had too much tolerances in the bearings. Maybe he had the bearings in backwards. Maybe the oil pump quit working. I don't know what happened, but something let go, and you can see a hole in the pan. All right, I had this one too. Check it out. And here's number three. Okay, restaurant idea. A restaurant idea? Tell me what you think of this. All right. A Thai food restaurant. Okay. Okay. But it's in a ship and it's split right down the middle. So on the left hand side, you have the bar, and that, so kids can't go in that part. And on the right hand side, you have food and drinks, right? And it's called the Titanic. T-H-A-I. Yeah. Tannic. Why do you do this? Bring the forklift in and you're gonna need to come in kind of like this and then straighten it out because you need to pull right in here onto these forks. As Alyssa gets more familiar with some of the tasks I've already given her, I wanna to continue to broaden her knowledge of the shop and what's going on. That's why I'm spending time with her today, learning about equipment, safety, and then uh, the installation of the drivetrain. Uh, now turn it and come in slow. I think that's gonna be too hard of a turn. Mm -hmm. See the problem with it? Mm -hmm. You're gonna hit everything. So back out and go in closer. It's one of the things, and when you're driving something and you haven't gotten used to it and you've got a lot of expensive stuff and you can do damage with it, so she's being cautious. But sometimes people just sit there and they- Is this far enough back, Dad, or do I need a running start? What? Is this far enough back? Yeah, you can come back. Well, do, you sent me out into the wasteland. I sent you so out to get straightened out so you I can get, get some air into your lungs. every day. You're, at, you're wiggling back and forth up against this wall. You're just, you're up against this wall and that wall don't care. You've got a whole a world out here. Are you done yet? There's a world waiting for you. Sure. You done? And just so you know, it will, at a certain point, because it's crooked, mm -hmm. it'll force the engine around to being straight. So okay. don't worry when it scrapes it across the floor because that's what it will do. You're where you need to be. So now you're gonna wanna turn your wheels to your left. And because okay. where we're going with this unit is underneath the shop crane right here. Okay, stop going crazy. I don't know why you've gone crazy. I don't know what happened, if it's too much caffeine. Maybe I did something as a dad early. I don't know. I'm still Keep good over there. I'm gonna let you I'm know I'm still good? Not. Okay. You got my Didn't word. Didn't know if there was a cliff there or not. You have Didn't my know if word as a marine. Keep... I was never a Marine. Right there. Now let it down. Yep, that one goes forward. Okay, remember, just as gently as a human can touch something with finesse. Not like you just grabbed a fistful of candy and you're running out of the local convenience store. You're literally the worst person now, to work stop. for. Now uh, stop. That was but gentle. No, no. I don't. Okay, let me show you ginger. Ginger. <sighs> With the drivetrain assembled and ready to go in our 1970 Dodge Challenger, we are ready to reunite the 446 pack four speed numbers matching drivetrain with the very rare plum crazy 1970 Dodge Challenger RT. Hey! Show me the old <laughs> Is it safe? The 1966 Fastback Charger was introduced in mid-season of the 1966 model year in retaliation to what competitor's car? AMC Marlin, Ford Mustang, Plymouth Barracuda. The answer coming up after the break. Because of the because obvious of the threat obvious to untold, untold numbers of citizens, citizens this station will remain on, on the air, air day, and night. day and night. So which car was the mid-season 66 Dodge Charger Fastback retaliating against? The answer is all of the above. All three of those cars were sporting the new stylish Fastback type top. Dodge felt it needed to compete with the modern times, so therefore the 1966 Dodge Charger was introduced. It has been established that the unburied dead are coming back to life. Hi, Alyssa. Hey. You getting your colors figured out? There's your Dana rear end stuff. Right, right here? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so all the marks. Masking tape as well. That we don't have, that I haven't been putting on, but that I have up front in my office that can go on just like the Dana. 
So you're gonna wanna look underneath that car and refresh your memory on all the things, the markings we put, which is the white line, the white X on the back of the thing, okay? And then wherever the white daubs were, read through there and find out where all those go. Okay. Time is of the essence on all the cars that we're working on. The Sunroof Challenger can't be here very long. So I'm gonna grab Royal, go over to the disassembly area, get the car, all the fluids out of the car, get it disconnected, get it ready to lift the engine out of there so we can get it torn down and find out what the failure is exactly and what we have to do to fix it. While we're doing that, I feel comfortable with Alyssa working on the uh, assembly line markings. I taught her on the Hemi Charger how to do it. I feel comfortable cutting her loose with that. I have a lot of confidence she'll do a great job. It's really great getting to work on the vehicle by myself without my dad around. Um, it's great that he trusts me to do it without him around. It is quite a bit more time consuming, not having his knowledge there, actually having to go through it and look it up myself. But other than that, I'm pretty excited to see how I do. Everybody knows that the drivetrain is assembled at the manufacturer by lowering the car down around the K-member with all those components on it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna leave the K-member in the car, the transmission, the drive shaft, all those things hooked up. We're gonna save some time by just taking the hood off and doing it old school like we used to do in the driveway, lift the engine up out of the engine compartment and move it over to an engine stand. If you'll hold it there, are you gonna take it over I'm there? I'm gonna take it over to the machine shop. Me and Michael get it torn apart the rest of the way. I still, while you're here, wanna get the drivetrain in the Challenger real quick. So we can at least get it setting in there. Okay. I am nervous because he seems to always find something that's wrong with it. So yeah, I'm nervous. So you got the Y, the blue shaped Y on the top of the transmission. There. Uh, the school bus yellow daub right behind that. Right here. Yep, that one there. And then you have the white mark on the trans, uh, the extension housing to main case. Right here? Yep. Then between the one and two bolts on the side cover of the transmission. Yep. There. And you have the school bus yellow on the bottom case side bolt. Yep. Do you mind if I work on that rear end? Or are you going yeah, to put numbers the, on it? It's yeah. all ready to go? Um, yeah, it's ready to go in if you want to get the nuts off of the, the front hanger. Did you want to see how I uh, stamp that? Just make sure yeah. it's look good. I'll look the 079 real quick. Oh, good. On okay. this side? Yep. Okay, and you got the differential housing mark right there. Oh, nice. Got the part number right there. Beautiful. Got your inspection marking there. And then we'll do these white daubs on those yeah. once they get in and torqued down. And same thing with these once they get in and torque down. Okay, so Alyssa, the, la yeah. those, uh, the last three digits of the assembly number in this book, just go, here, I'll show you over here. Okay. But this is the E body, so we'll go down one more, 426 and 440. The lettering is blue, 677. Okay. So it gets a blue 677 on the side of the gearbox. Okay. Let them get around here, They're nice and solid. Don't let it smooth. Getting pretty good there, youngin. Yeah. Fruit of my loin? No. Nope. Seed of my? No. Nope. Daughter. My daughter. How did I do that? I don't know. Why isn't this together yet? The only thing left is they get a big white X right over the top of those numbers. X, uh, where's that at? Where's that at? Yep, see so you've ripped those, so I hope you're happy. I knew that was gonna get blamed on me. I'm gonna pick up well, they whole weren't ripped reinforcers. An hour ago. Yeah, they weren't ripped until you went tearing through it. I haven't even been in it. Yes, you're I was right. in this book. Yeah, Buckeye. You're, did you already forget, Dad? Getting that? Book? God, you're a liar and a fat mouth. <laughs> All right, you're not get, your dog. get your white X out. Get your white X out. Okay. We're just making this like butter anymore. It's like the assembly line for us. This is really nice. This is just like the old assembly line. It's nice watching Alyssa come around and really start to blossom as a, as a restoration technician. And so now when I go out and I say. Do the assembly line markings on this car. Make sure you pay attention to the book. For the most part, it's doing a really good job. I, I, I'm very proud of how she's starting to come together. Okay, so right now uh, we got the rear end in. We're getting ready to install the front suspension and K-member with the transmission alongside it. We've just got to put the upper control arms in so that we can marry them to the spindles once it goes into place. And I'm going to work with these guys getting that done now. Me and Mike here, we're going to mount up our tires and wheels for our 70 Dodge Challenger RT 446 pack. Yeah. All right, let's get these babies mounted and balanced. What do you think? Yep, sounds good. All right. All right. Mike was kind enough to show me how to use our tire machine here. All right, we're going to put a little lube here on the tires. It helps them go on better without tearing the rubber. You don't want to do that. Get that baby down on there. 
You ever shot there? Yeah. Oh, first try. Look at that. Part that everybody dreads. <laughs> yeah. These are the original tires that came on that car, a Goodyear Polyglass GT G6015. Make her just like, just like off the factory. That's right. When the machine spins a wheel, it tells us exactly how much weight to make it perfectly round so you don't get any kind of a wobble when you're driving. Tells you right where to put them. Does all the hard work for you. Makes everything work out good. It only takes a second, too. It's amazing how fast that thing works. And we can keep the weights off of the outside, right, Dave? Yes, sir. Yeah, we got those sticky weights that go on the inside of the rim so you don't see the weights stamped on the outside. So, I mean, it's not a real big deal with these rally wheels because they have a beauty ring that goes around the rim. So even if you have those outside weights, you don't notice them as bad. All you can really see is the tab right in there, but sticky weight's the way to go. Just a lot cleaner look. Yeah, they're in little quarter ounce increments. Yep, this one takes two ounces, so eight quarter ounce weights. Just stick right on the inside of the wheel, right there. This incredible story becomes more ghastly with each report. They're coming to get you, Barbara. First thing you want to make sure is you see this bumper stop right here? Yeah. That marries up with that component right there. See that flat spot right there? Mm -hmm. That's what makes these left and right. So that spot and this ball joint faces down like that. So this goes in and it sits in here and then it has oh. bolts that goes through it. And that's what allows it to articulate up and down with the suspension, okay? That's, yeah. So I'm gonna give you that. And and so usually these are really tight. So let, yeah. me get, let me get my dead blow. Okay. You see what it's doing? Okay. Now go ahead and put the nut and the lock nut on there. Probably close to get started. Keep coming, looking good, Rollo. Beautiful, look at that. <laughs> we did really well. We worked on the Sunroof Challenger. We got the 440 HP out of it. Uh, I'm sure it's gonna end up needing the short box. It's got a hole through the side of it. Garth's 1970 446 pack, four speed uh, track pack Dodge Challenger has now got its drivetrain in its original numbers matching 440 HP2 but it is the number of matching original V-code, 446 pack, 390 horsepower and 70, and 385 horsepower and 71, installed in the car with the Hemi 4 speed with the correct numbers on the transmission, which are on the side of the transmission. 677. Beautiful. That's the last three digits of the part number C. C to my loin. The di Nope. Well, I don't know where you came from. If, if you Daughter? See a, if I'd it, like to if be referred was, to If it was the immaculate reception, daughter. you should be holding out for a lot more money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Daughter would be. Dana? is in, all detailed out, nice job. Thank What's you. the part number on the Dana? 676. No, that's the part oh. number for the transmission for the Hemi 4-speed for the 70 Charger. <laughs> What's the part number for the Dana for the 70 Challenger? Don't remember. Okay, and uh, and we're ready now to start assembling the rest of the car. Good job. Sounds good, thanks. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> Looking for zero. Yeah, Perfect. very nice. But yeah, we're not gonna put our love rings on and center cast because the wheels will be coming on and off the car. We don't wanna bang those up, so this'll get us until we're about ready to finish her up. Perfect, let's go put them on. Nice. So here, I think you're gonna like this one. So you round up a group of alcoholics, right? They've tried, they've tried, they're just not gonna make it back out of it, right? No, 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 I know, it's a, it's a funny premise. 
You put them, it's a, it's a competition. The whole goal is to make it through the entire game show, which a little bit kind of got a little Jeopardy in there, got a little competition in there, got the Ninja Warrior stuff in there. <laughs> but the main, their main thing is just not to have a drink, right? And there's drinks everywhere, right? The biggest boozer. So at the end, at the end, the guy wins an all expense paid trip to the best uh, alcohol rehab clinic in the country. What we're doing is getting ready to uh, disassemble the 440 out of the 70 Challenger sunroof car. This is the one that has the rod through the side of the block. We had found that it definitely got hot. Uh, from a water standpoint, it overheated enough to melt the hose into this hold, this hose holder. So we're afraid that everything along with it got cooked. Once we actually get the engine apart, get the heads off, we'll be able to see, see things like if the cylinder head gasket was blown between the two cylinders, that caused it to overheat. You know, what, what's the root of the problem? So that's what we're gonna find out today as we get it apart. What we're doing is getting ready to uh, disassemble the 440 out of the 70 Challenger sunroof car. This is the one that has the rod through the side of the block. We had found <clears throat> that it definitely got hot. Uh, from a water standpoint, it overheated enough to melt the hose into this, hold, uh, this hose holder. So we're afraid that everything along with it got cooked. Once we actually get the engine apart, get the heads off, we'll be able to see, see things like if the cylinder head gasket was blown between the two cylinders, that caused it to overheat. You know, what, what's the root of the problem? So that's what we're gonna find out today as we get it apart. The, the, the only upside to any of this is there's 67 miles on this engine. So all the pieces that we put on it before the car left here, like the date coated spark plug wires, the date coated coil, all that stuff, we're gonna be able to reuse that. But the things that are sensitive to the cooling system, that's the stuff that we're gonna have to uh, double check over at the machine shop. So anything like cylinder heads, anything that could have got hot, basically. How'd we get this car to begin with? Way back, way back, way back in the day. And this car came out of Utah and it was nothing but a shell. All we had was the body and the sunroof mechanism was in it. We had the fender tag, the broadcast sheet, and the dash bin, which were all separated from it. Just like that, there was not much there. And that's what, and that's where it all started when we built the car from. Well, here's gonna be the magic, Mickey, right here. Hang on, I'll give you a hand with it. Yeah, I don't need a hand with a bull cylinder. It's right here. Sir? Oh yeah, you see that? Ever see a cylinder head gasket do that? I've never took a cylinder head out other than one that had a blown head gasket that was melted to the head. That's how hot it got. Both heads gonna have to go out and they're gonna have to be pressure tested, hey. magna fluxed, straight edged. And then we're probably gonna have to go through and check those valves to make sure they're not bent right. from the heat. Yeah, there's a bent valve right there. Oh. So what I'm looking at right here is this valve should be like these valves. It should be seated down in there. See that big gap on that side? This valve hit the piston. This piston's the one that hit it. Hmm. But it's not broken. Those might clean up if they haven't been just destroyed. And that's the side that we have the hole out through the side of the block, right? Yeah. And it's melted to it too, the cylinder head. So no doubt, it got hotter than hell. Oh, oh. oh wow. That took what we call a dipsy doot. Holy cow, look it's at that. Cap. Can I talk you into a slightly used <laughs> rod bolt? It's a little used. How about a how about a low mile, a 67 original oh. mile windage tray? I look at that. Yes, never saw one unglued like that. Just stretch everything out of it. Wow. Our 440 is not looking very hopeful right now. It's definitely uh, suffered blunt force trauma of some kind. And uh, it's, it's looking to me like at least the bottom end of the engine, crankshaft rods are probably all damaged as a result of this thing coming through the block. We'll know more once we get the rest of the engine apart. Here's a 
classic employee. So the guy who's driving the truck says, and you heard it from his own lips, yep. I'm idling along drinking some milk. I got some Oreo cookies I just sure the milk and cookies, he's, but he he's real in it. idling along. He's in, all of a sudden he hears a weird noise. And the engine just explodes. I believe that he was driving along and he heard and it made a weird noise and stopped running. Anybody who wants to say that this engine came apart while it was idling is out of their mind, okay? This thing was probably doing about 6,000 RPM when it let go. If you take a look at it, you can see that the windage tray has been just beat to death, just beat to death for, for a short period of time. The, the connecting rods are twisted and molded into different shapes. They don't even look like them. Keep in mind, this is a 446 pack. These rods are the heaviest webbing rods of any Mopar out there except for the 426 Semi. It's hard to damage an engine like this, and it certainly is hard to do at 800 RPM idling in gear. True or false? In 1968, the NASCAR-inspired Dodge Charger RT failed to beat the Ford cars on the high bank oval tracks. The answer coming up after the break. They're coming to get you, Barbara. So in 1968, did the NASCAR-inspired Dodge Charger RT fail to beat the Ford cars on the high bank oval tracks? The answer is true. And as a result of that, Dodge went back to the drawing board and created the 1969 Charger 500 and later the Dodge Charger Daytona. First eyewitness accounts of this grisly development came from people who were understandably frightened. You follow around a rag tag group of serial killers. Oh gosh. Okay. And where do you find a ragtag group of serial killers? Well, okay, they're not serial killers. That probably wouldn't be as good. Okay, I got, you're right. Because if they're serial killers, that means they've done it more than once. They're probably not out running around. Probably not. Six, seven, so it, it, he's in between six or seven. Okay, you follow convicted murderers who have been released from prison. Okay. They've done their time to, all right. Yeah, all right? You round them up and that's the competition, okay? We're gonna take six, we're gonna take five, make it easier. All right. Five convicted murderers and they are going to go independently. Each one is gonna have a soft serve ice cream truck and they drive through the neighborhoods. And at the end of each day, they do a tally. It's kind of like that ca taxi cab confessions, right? So whoever, okay. whoever collects the most at the end, you know, I sold $20 worth of ice cream. I sold, and it's called Killing Me Softly. Oh boy. Because of the soft serve, you got softly, right? You could even use the song from Roberta Flack, actually. Now that we have the correct material for both cars, Larry is here to install the vinyl tops on our Hemi Charger and our 70 Challenger RT. Today, Royal and I are working on the 1970 Dodge Challenger RT, 446 pack, four speed through to Cordana. See, he's wearing his commemorative purple graveyard car shirt, four headlight system. What Barracuda had a four headlight system, what year? 71. That's my boy right there. <laughs> Otherwise, all Challengers 70 to 74 had a four headlight system, so that was what made that unique. Anyway, we're hoping to get the bumper on, exhaust system on, we have wiring under the hood to do, vinyl top moldings, and then there's about a half a dozen small things underneath the car that we need to get buttoned up. But that car's moving along really fast. We're doing awesome on it. It's a beautiful car. Would have been nice if you had been here all week helping out, but I appreciate I have. I appreciate everything you do for me. Thanks, buddy. Let's put this car together. Beautiful, look at this. You gonna make me crawl in there? Well, and you're gonna need to be inside the car to bolt these ones down inside the sail panel area. I'm sorry. I know. I'm gonna let you do the not as intelligent end. No, no offense. I just want to make sure. I'm the guy that has to repaint it. Actually, Will is. 
<laughs> Bull did a nice job on this. For his, it really. For his first car back, he did really good. The white and the chrome, it's really stunning. And these things clock in oh. a way that you know you've got it right, meaning because of the arc of the quarter panel where it meets the roof right here, you can rotate this just a little bit each way and find that sweet spot where it fits like it's supposed to. Right there's about it. So can you get that first one on? Oh, man. Piece of welding. Welding slag? Well, it's a wire. <laughs> Those are great, right? Right up the fingernail. Yeah. Here's the thing, putting vinyl top moldings on. Body men don't always take the time to look out for the guy that's got to assemble the car later. And so inside there, where the clip goes, there's a stud on the clip, and then it has to have a nut put onto it. That's what retains it in place. There's welding slag where the quarter meets the roof on this one, and that welding slag is in the way of him being able to start the actual nut on there. So he's either gonna try to knock that welding slag off there or gonna have to grind it off of there so he can get a footprint for that nut to go in place. Good job, Rolo. So nice. The, the vinyl top moldings are on. Man, now this is interesting. It's something I want to talk about. That's stunning. More cars were made back in the 70s, 60s and 70s with vinyl tops. I mean, it was a cool look. I mean, you expected almost to see a car with a vinyl top. Today, no cars have vinyl tops. But to put into perspective the rarity in that, most of these cars that were plum crazy would have had a black vinyl top. This one was optioned with the V1W. V1 means your vinyl top. The W, the suffix number or letter, is your color. So V1W would be white. V1X was from the TX9 black paint coat on the Mopars, which would have been black. If you had a, a yellow roof, it would have been a V1Y, and so on and so forth. Now the V1G was the only code they had for the black gator grain top, which is an exceptionally rare top, very desirable, looks exactly like alligator hide, V1G. Oh, wow. But the rarest, I think, of them all are the painted roofs, the V02. If you got a V02, it meant that the car was a two-tone. Very rarely do you see a Challenger two-tone. You don't even think of it as a two-tone when the top's a different color than the rest. You just think of like a poverty version of a vinyl top. Yeah. But it actually was the early version of a two-tone paint job, where now they I'll would split it down the middle and do it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of an interesting thing. Do they have the Mod Top in 70? They had the Mod Top in 70 on the Plymouth. They didn't offer it in the Dodges. You got me. It's OK. You're doing a good job, Rollo. We got all the exhaust system out for the Challenger right now. This is unique to the 446 pack. The 444 Burrow used a different system and the Hemi used a different system as did of course the LA engines and the 383s. But this is unique and correct for our six pack Challenger. We've got it laid out, inventoried, and we're getting ready right now to install that on our 1970 Dodge Challenger RT 446 pack four speed. What gear ratio? 323. Oh my God, they put an eight and three quarter in this car? No, it'd be a day night, 55. Or a Holy cow, it's never going to drive. 354. I don't know. I think you're hungry. I'm starving. But look. Left header pipe. Piece of cake. Put is this the on left the left side. side. Which, is, which way is it left? Driver's side and the left or? hand side. Always the left hand side. Everything's from always the driver's from, seat. Always from the driver's always seat. Always from the driver's seat, buddy. Where's the next pipe at? Right, right next here, one. Andy. Oh, you just make me so mad. I want to bash your skull in. Now that Royal and I have the exhaust system on the 76 pack Challenger, that gives me a short window of opportunity to go over and work with Mike on the block that just came back from the machine shop for our Sunroof Challenger. Do you mind if we put this motor together to you? I don't mind at all. I don't know what's, why you're milking it so long. I'd like to put exhaust manifolds on it, get the intake on it, get it over and get it painted. Well, yeah. You know, with the catastrophic failure of that engine, there was very little we could save. Basically, I had another F440 HP block that was date coded correct for the car. I donated that to the cause. I had another set of rods, another crankshaft, but we ended up having the machine shop completely build a new long block for this thing. That's what we're working on now. To date right now, I've got about 30 years, three decades under my belt. This is without a doubt, the most grenaded engine I have ever seen in my entire life. Let's put the spark plugs in now, too. Put some on the seal. Okay, scream over the top of me. Okay. Uh, yeah, if you have some assembly lube, that'd be great. Right there behind you, Benny. Oil would work? Oil would work, too, whatever you want to use. These spark plugs were actually installed when the engines were painted. 
And all they did was they taped off the end of the electrode. Pretty cool, huh? A little piece of trivia there for you as you're trying to walk in the master's footsteps. Follow the Shaolin priest. Everything went together real well on the 440 engine for the sunroof car. Uh, only real hiccup was the intake manifold. Didn't get shipped back with it. That's the, the correct four barrel intake manifold. Didn't get shipped back from the machine shop, so we gotta wait till tomorrow to go pick it up. That's gonna put us back a day on painting. But after that, we can get that engine painted and ready to go back in the car. Mark, why'd you move the car? What? You have the white stripe on there. We were gonna film that. I told you I was putting it on Sunday. So I, we don't show up on Sunday. We've, I show up, no. We've never shown up on you're Sunday. You're half right, I show up on Sunday. You guys never show up on Sunday. For four years, we have never shown up on Sunday. Right. But you continue to do work yes, on Sunday. Yes, I do. And you, I will continue to realize, do it on every Sunday. You realize we're trying to make a television show. I got a question for you. What color is that outfit you got on? I, so what, what, what do you want from me? I want to know when you're going to do something significant to cars so we can film it. Do you like me to tell you when I'm gonna do something on cars? That'd be good. Okay. I mean, I, I thought we worked this out. Of, of we, course, I will tell you when I'm getting ready to work on a car. Yeah. Okay? Okay. But you have to ask me nicely. <laughs> okay. You see, Sammy, I can handle the bullets, the bombs, and the blood. I don't want money, and I don't want medals. What I do want is for you to stand there in that funny brown outfit, and with your Harvard mouth, extend me some freaking courtesy. Okay. You have to ask me nicely. Okay. I thought I did every day. Hey, Mark, what are we doing today? How can Aaron! I help you? How can I help you make a good television show where we film stuff like, you know, the You didn't get know, the reference the to a few good men. That was Jack Nicholson when they were sitting down. Aaron? Are you going, are you drinking more coffee? Yeah. Hey, Aaron, did are you, you sure see that you need scene a few good men when Jessup's saying that one thing? Well, we got a white stripe. Glad we didn't get footage of it. Looks good. There it is. Yay. Aaron. Aaron. I got it. By the way, two and a half shots this time. Okay, here's an idea. Follow a group of lunatics around at the Oregon State Mental Institution, right? They're obsessed with excrement. The name of the show is One Flew Over the Poo Poo's Nest. Where is he? I was gonna... Aaron, is. Aaron, I had an idea for a show. These uh, inmates at the Oregon State Penitentiary, and they're obsessed with excrement, and it's called One Flew Over the Poo Poo's Nest, because that movie, which, there you are, that movie with uh, Jack Nicholson, where he was One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, is One Flew Over the Poo Poo's Nest. Why aren't you downstairs making my coffee? Because I'm editing the show. No, no, but it's time. All right, I had another idea for a show. All right. Go ahead. You heard of land sharks, right? Uh, on Saturday Night Live, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 